I am Luc Vermey and I welcome you to my lecture series on computer and network security. In this video on symmetric encryption, I will be talking about the one-time path and unconditional security. But let me start with briefly refreshing your memory on the basics of symmetric encryption. A symmetric cipher is a pair of functions E and D defined over the triple K, M, and C. E is the encryption algorithm, D is the decryption algorithm, K is the key space, M the message space, and C the ciphertext space. The encryption algorithm E takes as input the message M and the secret key K and transforms it into a ciphertext C. This ciphertext is then sent from our sender, in this case Alice, to our receiver Bob, for example over a computer network such as the internet. Bob then uses the decryption algorithm D, which is the inverse function of E, to transform the ciphertext C together with the secret key K back into our plain text message, message M. And this allows Bob to read the same message as Alice, while they do not transmit this message M itself over the network. If an attacker, such as a crypto analyst, intercepts the ciphertext C, it doesn't necessarily mean that he will be able to retrieve the message M and the key K, at least not if the encryption algorithm is secure. Some properties that need to be satisfied is that the algorithms E and D need to be computationally efficient. This could mean theoretical efficiency, such as um, computational complexity, or practical efficiency, that the execution time needs to be limited. Moreover, there is uh, the correctness property that says that the um, that any message M and key K, when encrypting the message M with K, and then decrypting the result again with K needs to result back into the original message M. <clears throat> and in previous videos, we talked about classical symmetric ciphers. And these ciphers rely on some simple substitution rules. Examples are the 2000 year old Caesar cipher, the general Caesar cipher, which replaces a character in the alphabet with a character a certain number of places further down the alphabet. Then there's a general substitution cipher which replaces a character with a random other unique character, Viginiere cipher, proton machines, and so on. And all of these ciphers are vulnerable to either brute force attacks or frequency attacks. The Caesar cipher is vulnerable to a brute force attack because the number of possible keys is very limited, namely equal to the number of characters in the alphabet. In that case, it's very easy to test all keys to see which is the correct one. The others are vulnerable to frequency attacks because the cipher text retains the same frequency of information of the characters from the alphabet as the plain text. So by counting how many times each character occurs in the ciphertext, we can map those onto the associated characters in the plain text. The first secure cipher was developed by Vernum in 1917. This cipher is not vulnerable to brute force or frequency attacks, and it is called the one-time pad. And in the one-time pad, the message space, ciphertext space, and key space are all equal. Namely, they all consist of a bit pattern, so ones and zeros, of size n. The key is a random bit string with the same length as a message. And the key is only used one time. This means there is no key reuse. This is very important for the security of the algorithm. How does the one-time path work? Well, it's actually very straightforward. It relies on the bitwise XOR operation of the message and key bit streams. That means we take our plain text message M, which is a bit stream, 
NR key generator, which generates our key stream K, they are of the same length, so we can do an exclusive OR of each bit of M with a corresponding bit of K. This gives us a ciphertext C, where each bit of C is basically an exclusive OR of the corresponding bits of M and K. And due to the properties of the exclusive OR, the inverse operation is the same, because the inverse function of XOR is XOR. So to get back our message M, we can do the same. We can take the exclusive OR of every bit of C with the corresponding bit of K. So let's take a look at an example. We have message M consisting of the bit string 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. We have our key k, which is of the same length and consists of the bits 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. And now I'll leave it to you to try and calculate the corresponding ciphertext c. I'll give you a bit of time. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time. So, let's take a look at the answer. The result is 1101110. And this result is the exclusive OR of every pair of bits in the message and the key K. To give an example, 0 and 1 give 1, 1 and 0 give also 1, 1 and 1 give 0 and so on. Let's take a look at the proof of correctness of the one-time pad, and this is actually quite straightforward because um, we just need to replace the encryption algorithm E and decryption algorithm D in our correctness property with exclusive OR. If we do that, we end up with KXOR KXORM Due to the properties of the exclusive OR, we can move the brackets, so then we get K, X, or K. The X OR of a bit string with itself gives all zeros. And the X OR of an all zero bit string with a bit string N gives M. So here we have shown that the encryption of M with K Decrypting that again with k gives us m, independent of what the value of k is. And this may all sound very perfect, because the um, one-time path is a secure algorithm. However, it has some practical problems. First of all, our key has to have the same length as a message. So that means for each message, since we cannot reuse any keys, we need to generate a unique key k of the same length. For a small message, this may be feasible, but for very large messages, this becomes very impractical. Second problem is that this long key has to be securely shared between both parties of the communication. So let's say we are communicating over a network such as the internet and you are sending data at 100 megabits per second. That means you need to generate a key of 100 megabits per second and share that securely between the sender and the receiver. This obviously is impractical. So that means that the one-time path, although a very elegant and secure algorithm, cannot really be used in practice. And that brings us to some security definitions for encryption algorithms. So the one-time path is a so-called unconditional or perfect secure algorithm. It is also the only known one at the moment. This means, in plain words, that the ciphertext generated by this algorithm does not contain enough information for an attacker such as a crypto analyst to determine the corresponding plain text, no matter how much ciphertext is available. You can express this mathematically as well by saying that given two messages, M0 and M1, 
and ciphertext C for any key K, the probability that C is the encrypted version of M0 equals the probability that C is the encrypted version of M1. So that means that if an attacker obtains C, he has no way of knowing if C corresponds to M0 or M1, because the probability is equal. In practice, we cannot use these unconditionally secure algorithms like the one-time path, so we have to resort to a weaker definition of security, namely computational or semantic security. In this case, the cost of breaking the cipher exceeds the value of the information. In other words, the time required to break the cipher exceeds the information lifetime. And let's say I develop an encryption algorithm, but it takes 1000 years to break the cipher. It's not unconditionally secure, but still, in 1000 years, the information I've, been, I've encrypted is probably worthless, so it is computationally secure. We can also mathematically define this. The definition is very simple, uh, similar to the one of unconditional security, but instead of saying that the probability that ciphertext C belonging to a plain text M0 or M1 is equal, we say that the difference between these probabilities is very small, namely less than or equal to some small value epsilon. And that was it on the one-time path of unconditional security. In the next video, I will be talking about so-called stream ciphers, which is a family of encryption algorithms, symmetric encryption algorithms, that are based on the ideas of the one-time path.